Alright, so right now we're on our way to the uh, Three Sinks Cave. And what's cool about this cave is it, halfway through it, um, there's a sump. And it's where all the water pools up. And we, uh, we're trying to get through it. We're trying to get to the other side. We're trying to see what's there and see if we can get anywhere. And so I'm thinking, well, let's just put on the wetsuit and go on in. We uh, see if we can find anything new. Currently, we're going to try to explore more of that sump. Ooh, let off the gas. The out. Let off the gas. Okay. And move the foot over to the brake. And... Hey, everybody. It's... Uh, uh, Jake the Snake, Joel the Mole, and Calvin the Walvin. No, they've been calling me Spiel Uncle, like spelunking, but I'm the uncle. I'm his uncle, and I don't know who this guy is. We found him outside. He was along the road. It seemed like he was good at take caving. <laughs> we are, this is part B of trying to get through the sump. So we're going to try to stop the water. We're going to try to free the sump. Uh, there's a hole in this cave that's underwater, and uh, apparently folks out there in the YouTube world like us to make bad decisions, so... We're, we're, we're trying to be enthusiastic about this! <laughs> Closer. Closer. And there is no trails to this cave that we have been uh, scouting out. I use my GPS to locate this because uh, I know where it's at. Once we find a sinkhole from the satellite, we were just following it by GPS. And the GPS doesn't work very well, so you have to set it up before you leave. You have to know a little bit about your coordinates. Otherwise, you will not find this cave. It is not on a map. It is not on a road. You can also find caves using LiDAR. We've been using LiDAR, and that's better than satellite. That's like satellite, but without trees. So it is or nicknamed the bare earth. These are natural sand castles. And what's really cool about them is they're formed only in caves, nowhere else. It's where there's a sandy bottom and it drips all around it and drips on it, but it leaves, it drips and erodes everything away except for this little mass where the water's not going to put the snow. And it's really interesting because they're just random in the caves and they're just a unique part that you'll never see anywhere else. We're not going to touch this or any of the others. They are cool. This is Jacob helping Joel and a lot of people that just watch these videos and don't know much about us. Uh, these are not my two sons. Joel is Jacob's friend and he comes caving with us. Honestly, they're both really great. And Jacob is my nephew and my neighbor. So his dad is my brother. and We go with his dad a lot also. He's the only boy in our family. He's just got a bunch of cousins that are girls. So. Jacob likes to go out when I go hiking, and he's also about the only one left that can hike with me. He's 14, and he's just a little bit small, which only makes it better for caving. And Joel's a little bit small too, so caving's easy for these guys. They're both quick, light of foot, can get through tight passages, and are extremely brave. And you can see here they're being very safe, helping one another down the waterfall. The waterfall isn't slippery, and falling doesn't really get you hurt. The problem is if you fall, you're going to get wet. And this water is right above freezing. Water in caves is the temperature of the cave. So this cave is about 40 degrees. Most of them around here are pretty cold, about 40 degrees. A little bit colder in entrance. Usually hovers around freezing. So the water is extremely cold. You have extremely limited time in which you can get in that water before your hands go numb. Obviously, if you fall in... Uh, you can get hypothermia pretty fast. Caves are damp, you can get pneumonia, so you have to be careful and be warm. So Jacob's bringing the rope down here. And this is what we believe the cave continues. And we are trying to, I brought the equipment in and we had to change it, so I'm tearing it apart and we are rebuilding some of our equipment. We were essentially attaching GoPros onto this device and sticking it under there and we're trying to see if this tunnel full of water comes up on the other side. This is dropping the GoPro in. And we were able to determine that it likely does and as you can see in here, there's a little pipe down at the bottom near the middle 
and you'll see that better here. There's a pipe, and we wondered if some time ago someone had intentionally built a dam there on the other side that caused the water to back up through the tunnel passage. And so I drew a map of what I believe it is. This is what I believe is going on. I believe this used to be a very narrow passage and a creek runs through it and someone built a small dam on the far side of the passage. Now, why they did that, I believe someone had been in there, had found something on the other side of this water tunnel and they built a system to keep people out, but it had broken. I thought the only way through is to swim and so began our really terrible idea of putting on scuba gear and sending me through the old pipe. I may need a little help moving my camera once I get that and, and my gear, but otherwise, as a secondary unit, I'm using this to go through so I can video. It's got both my underwater flashlights and it will be the stick which I uh, relieve pressure off the valve. That's the plan. That's the best I can do. Okay. Pick up, you want to come over here and give me a hand? Yep. Okay. And a rope. Okay, a rope. We'll establish that before I get myself in any danger. Sure. Mm -hmm. Well, reality is I can't, I'm not, I don't want my feet to go out of sight. Oh, okay. Uh, and so if I'm in there and I'm comfortable, I can speak through this. Uh, I'm just going to stick my upper body in there. I would be probably scared to go beyond that. Oh, okay. I just think that the other side is literally just a knuckle. There's some more rocks up there. So, you know, if I'm flailing, it's all I really would need is help pulling my legs out because I can't back out. I can't see this without banging my knees. And so begins my work on the other side. That's the whole shebang right there. Uh, smash me. Yeah, sorry. Let me lower a little lower. Here I am sticking my hand in the back side of the pipe. It's lowering. Uh, I'm cleaning the pipe out. It'll take me a few minutes, not too long. Okay. The, the pipe's got a lot of rocks in it. I might not be able to reach them all. And no person would ever be able to get in there again unless they were willing to swim through that tunnel. And I suspected oh, that's Just very stop moving people. it. I had to How make sure coming? everybody else got through. Like this. Do you want do you want rocks? No. And I think this is Jacob. He tried to hover above you're the fine. water. You're, you're gonna have to commit some of that water. No. Nope. Commit your knees to it. No. Nope. Okay. I'm not committing 
Jacob, your helmet, your helmet's on the rock. Is anybody else coming? Yeah, Joel is. Okay. And then Joel. This is. And David did come through later after I had gone in the cave a little bit. Look up. I set my gloves through. You see, Joel's got my long, rubberized gloves. <laughs> you do not want to put your hands in that water very long. I guess he's coming through. No the rocks. Okay, well, your knees are going to get wet. That's your butt right there. That's the hard knuckle. This way. Hip you can stay hip up now. You can stay hip high. Don't stand up too quickly. You're fine. Turn this way. Okay. Not bad. Take a look. Don't <sighs> for the camera. Take a look. Woo! You can get back there and look at what I've been digging out. All right. Oh my goodness. Jacob, yeah. look at these things. Whoa. Oh, look at that, Joel. Would you look at that? So we're uh, we're trying to get back to the back of the cave so we can photograph some of these things, but we don't want to touch them or damage them because it's really spectacular. Yesterday when we came hiking up here, we were stopped by police and there had been an auto wreck. But we didn't want to be disrespectful. But as you can see, whoever it was slid off the road here and uh, having gone back and checked the police reports, uh, a young man who was driving the vehicle went off the cliff and did die. I was thinking about risk and how each one of us has to manage their own risk. And sometimes in an area like a vehicle where we feel safe, it's actually a lot of risk driving where we go into caves, Jacob, and do something that appears to be dangerous, but the fact of the matter is the risk is relatively low. The truck went off the road and it went down here into the canyon. They saw the trees throw it off the road and it just, just shattered pieces everywhere down in there. A lot of people that watch our videos, they'll notice that we take risks and they'll say you need to be careful and of course that's true. But you know, they find that Whenever safety measures are put into place, whenever, for example, roads are improved and vehicles are improved, people just drive faster. Yeah. So people have a, what's called a safety equilibrium. Whenever we do something dangerous, when Jacob and I do something that's out in the woods, I always tell them, we're gonna be extra careful today yeah. because we're trying to bring equilibrium to our risk. If we're gonna go do something that's slightly more dangerous, we're gonna plan it out, we map out what we're doing, we tell people where we're at. We A lot of times our videos when we're doing something that looks dangerous, we have extra people with us, we have ropes, we've gone through caves previously, we don't film something until we know that it's safe. So we're doing these things so that what we do appears to be dangerous, uh, but it really, it, it's, no. it's got less risk. And what ends up happening is, one type of person will shame someone else for taking high risk and the high risk people will shame the people that are unwilling to take risks and we all have to learn to be a whole lot nicer to each other because we're all fighting a battle and here's a case of a young man who was just out uh, taking a drive even though he felt he was doing something safe ended up dying so we're... yeah it's sad but it just goes to show we have to be nicer to each other you can't get mad at someone for being willing to take high risks and you can't get mad at somebody because they're unwilling to take risks. We all just have to encourage each other to be careful and to enjoy life as best we can. Yeah. Woo! Woo! Hey, yeah! you almost got it.